Welcome back everyone, this is Dave from Corn Productions, my co-host Stacey here to talk about The Sinner, Season 4, Episode 6, titled Part 6. The episode's description reads as follows. A shocking new crime further rattles the town of Clark Harbor. Ambrose and Meg team together. And I guess this is the episode where they're still friends, so that's good to know. Uh, the It was written for television by Gerald Sesta, who also served as co-executive producer for Season 4, and directed by Batten Silva. He has two episodes, this one and the next one. The episode originally aired on November 17th, 2021. Before going any further, I'll tell you a couple of things. One, this is not a sport-free podcast. If you haven't watched the episode, I recommend you go and check it out. And then, come back. <coughs> and then come back and give us a listen. Secondly, if you're listening on one of the platforms of this podcast now available on, please subscribe. You can also head over to my YouTube channel, Corn Productions, where digital content can be discovered. If you're already on my YouTube channel, please like, share, and comment, as well as subscribing to our channel. And... Hit the bell so that you get notified when we drop new content. All right, shout out this week. Ashley Wright, he commented, The serpent eating its own tail is the serpent of life. As you mentioned it in the States, I'm guessing it's popular. But in Britain, a lot of ambulances and medic-type vehicles, etc. have variations of it on their vehicles. So that's pretty interesting. And no, I don't think it's quite as popular in the U.S. Yeah, I mean, I know I've seen it places, but... I want to say mostly in media. Mm. Like I don't think it's something I see out in everyday life. The only thing, the only thing I, I remember specifically seeing it. For, well, actually, I saw it in two places. One was Millennium because that was a key symbol in that series, and it also popped up in the X Files in an episode. All right, so Stacy, your thoughts on this week's episode? All right, so last week we had this big slowdown, right? Mm. We were very focused on our story. We were learning about the whole like nature cult thing mm -hmm. <laughs> this week we jump right back into the action um we got a whole bunch of new characters and returning characters that we haven't seen in a while we got the police back involved in the investigation we're investigating a murder now mm -hmm. um, so nobody cared about percy's death but we care about brandon's death everybody's involved portland comes in we get to see reed price yes, finally we've been yes. waiting for him so here he is making his first appearance in this <clears throat> series as Detective Brooks, we also get our first shot of uh, Scott McCord, yes. also from from Fame. Yep, uh, who plays Victor on that series. This might as well be a From episode because there's three characters there's here. There's three, three From three actors. Three in this From episode. actors here, right? Yep. We've got uh, Reed Price, who in From plays Tom the bartender. We've got Scott McCord, who plays Victor, and we have Zach Fay, who uh, oh goodness, what's his character's name? Josh Moore, I think. Officer, Josh. what's his character's name in From? Oh, oh, in From, he's Reggie. In Reggie, From. Reggie. There we go. Um. So yeah, all three of them are in this episode together finally, instead of you know one at a time. Right. Yep. And uh, we also have like some returning characters from uh Sullivan's Crossing, such as uh, Martha Irving, who plays Belle Kaiser. She comes back in this episode. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so it's it's a great uh, kind of pick up right, right. The, yep. the pace picks up a little bit in this episode and we're this is kind of the introduction to the last three right we're kind of on a a whirlwind from here till the end where we're dealing with the bigger issues what what's really going on mm -hmm. in this island like what what is happening right and all of the the pieces are starting to kind of come together at this point of how all of these different little tidbits we've been learning all played a part in Percy's death as well as uh now Brandon's death and just what the heck were all these people involved in right yeah so yeah some interesting stuff in this episode I have one quibble and that there's a Percy hallucination scene that seems kind of pointless because it's covering the same ground that we've already covered well they had to have reasons to put her in there right I, I mean I guess yeah it, it's a minor thing it's just like okay we already know this like this is not new information see okay I think yeah why that has to happen is because they wanted to keep uh her character in every episode and mm. this episode wasn't very flashback heavy nope like most of the episodes are very flashback heavy we only had a couple little flashbacks in this and i think we only saw percy once in a flashback and it was very brief right um we're mostly looking at you know other characters mm -hmm. situations in this episode so yeah they probably just wanted to include alice a little bit more gotcha, gotcha. so they gave her some kind of pointless uh <laughs> hallucination scenes but you know if i think it's a little realistic like if if this is what's you know haunting him mm. is these thoughts he's gonna keep having the same thoughts over and over fair 
All right. So do we have anything else to say before diving into Let's this thing? Let's jump into the scene by scene. Okay. And so, uh, right off the bat yes. is we got uh, Zach Fay returning. We yep, haven't seen yep. him in a couple episodes. Yes. The episode begins. Brandon is dead. Brandon, I hardly knew you. And actually, that's very literal because I hardly knew his character. Yeah. Actually, we learned a lot more about him now that he's dead, I think. Yeah. I mean, actually, I think he's more in more scenes in this episode than he was in the entire season up to this point. Yeah, probably. Uh, after the fa after he died. So, Officer Josh, played by Zach Bay, as we mentioned before, is roping off the area. Raskin and Ambrose are in at the scene of the body. Raskin is on the phone with Portland Homicide, who are now on their way. And Raskin laments that this isn't supposed to happen here, and he's a little shaken by these events. Yeah, and I, I find it funny that Harry is, like, very involved right now. He's, mm. he's on the body. He's investigating. I think he forgot that he doesn't work here. Right. Um, well, all the other cops are just standing in the background, but he's right on the boat, like, investigating right. with Raskin. And Raskin is not objecting. And the most, it's it's kind of like one of these little moments of humor is while uh, he's on the phone saying, tell, telling, you know, whoever in Portland he's talking to, no, of course we didn't touch anything. Right. While he says that, Harry is touching everything, <laughs> <laughs> going through the guy's pocket. Right. So uh, Meg and Harry commiserate. Uh, Brandon had just become a father. Did we know that? Uh, yeah. It was mentioned once okay. before, briefly, okay. yeah. So the town apparently thinks that Harry is a bad luck charm, and I, I wonder why, honestly. Yeah, the onlookers in this pub are kind of just staring him down. Right. He's not very welcome right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, he wouldn't be anyway because he's kind of an outsider. But uh, Meg wonders if this has something to do with Percy. Harry wants to talk to Brandon's family before the Portland guys get there, and he doesn't quite manage that. Because in the very next scene... Detective Brooks, played by Reed Price. Reed Price, there he is. You know what? You know he would have been more effective in the scene if he had, had a, bat. a baseball bat. Yes, okay. I know I'm sorry. Going there. I'm sorry. I just had to make that joke. But anyway, <laughs> um, one thing I just want to backtrack for one second to mention the gum wrapper. So what he oh, found yes. on the body was the, the he found gum, nicotine gum, mm -hmm. um, which is the same gum wrapper packaging that he had found at the dock where that footage was so that right. footage becomes a big part in this episode mm -hmm. um where we know somebody was there with percy this was the night of her death like a couple hours before i think yeah and um we only saw the back of their head right it's somebody wearing a black hoodie right um which is very misleading mm -hmm. once we know everything else there is to know about this story but it's who is that person right, right? and now everybody thinks it's brandon well everybody being harry and meg because he has that gum on him, and that's the same gum that was found at the scene, huh, or at okay. the, the dock scene, the scene of the uh, of the video footage. Gotcha. So, uh, Reed Price, Detective Brooks, is interrogating Mike Lamb, and they suspect him of killing Brandon. Or of uh, somehow being involved. Right. And it's... <sighs> Raskin is just kind of sitting by, like, listening. He looks so uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and um, it's really kind of funny like he's he's always been in charge right and yeah. now that, that brooks is there this this big shot from the mainland he's just like this sitting little duck <laughs> right uh and uh, brooks is curious why mike left on his boat earlier in the day than the norm and uh, harry comes in and is stopped by josh harry is upset that they're suspecting mike he interrupts brooks interview with him which is something that really annoys raskin and harry insists that they are making a mistake accusing mike Brooks wants to know who he is, and Raskin just says he's the guy who found the uh, the body. Right, that's how he introduced him. Right. He was like, he found the body. He doesn't even say he's right. a former detective. He doesn't say he's been helping with right. the investigation. I'm curious, is he... He's does some... he think he's going to get in trouble for having an outsider help? Not only that, but he seems like embarrassed by... Uh... The fact that he couldn't do his job. Right, that and he, he has had to have, have this guy help him. And oh, so it's kind of like, you know, the ex comes in, and then the, the current girlfriend is like, uh, who is this person? You know, like, it's kind of like, it, 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 that's kind of how the scene plays out. Right. <laughs> and uh, the fact that Josh is the one trying to prevent Harry from getting in, that's from, his... from talking to Portland. Yeah. Great foreshadowing here. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that several times throughout this episode. Where yes, yes. Josh is, like, stopping people from doing things. And mm -hmm. when you just watch it, you're like, oh, he's just, you know, doing his job. Right. But no, this is great foreshadowing for what's mm -hmm. to come, um, for those of you who already know. And if you don't right. know, keep your eyes on Josh as you watch the next couple episodes. And I do have a side story to tell right here. Go ahead. As I'm taking these notes, so this was two nights ago, I was taking these notes. 
Okay, so I'm rewatching the episode, taking my notes, typing up, you know, what's happening in the scenes. Uh, we've got Reed Price and Zach Faye on the screen at the same time. Like, Ooh, they're both in this scene. It's exciting. Right? And I know Scott McCord's coming up. Right. So I've got From On My Mind. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this story is not going to make any sense to anybody who has not watched From, but From Ali, <laughs> you're going to understand this. As I'm taking these notes, and there's there's our From people, I hear this really loud noise at my window, which is just a few feet away from where I'm working. And I was thought cicadas? I thought there was a bird like tapping on my window <laughs> and it was loud. And I was like, what the heck? Um, so I get up and I, I move the blinds to look and yeah, it was a cicada. Oh, shit. there was a cicada Damn. pounding on my window. Like that's crazy. Pounding on my window. It sounded huge. I thought it was a bird. Wow. It was a cicada and it stayed there for like the next 10 minutes doing that while mm -hmm. I'm taking these notes. Did you keep an eye on it while you were doing that? I, yeah, I was like, listen, you're not coming in. I'm not opening the window for you. <laughs> well, in the case of if it were a cicada from from, it wouldn't matter if you had uh, had the windows closed or not. It would have gotten it in. It would have found a way in. But, yeah. I mean, the monsters, you know, can't come mm, in. So. Right, yeah. But, yeah, I was I was in a very weird from headspace <laughs> in, in this moment with uh, these actors on the screen. <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. Uh, so, all right. Uh, Raskin eventually gets annoyed with Harry. Uh, he ends up taking... Uh, Harry aside, he says it's not Raskin's case anymore, and he feels like Harry dis just disrespected him in there, and he tells Harry that there's no room on the case anymore for him, and I guess they aren't bros anymore. Yeah, so and Harry's been kicked out, officially. Yeah. Raskin has broken up with Harry in this scene, and it's very, very heartbreaking. Uh, so, Meg comforts Brandon's mother, but there's an ulterior motive here uh, that we're not immediately aware of but this is apparently some kind of wake yeah uh, so this is a wake it's yeah. at the kaiser household yeah. um one character that is credited as, as being in this scene and i didn't even pick out who she was in the room because i didn't hear anybody talk but apparently somebody did it, they're credited just as being bell's friend uh that actress is diane marie carey okay uh and she's also credited in being in episodes one and two as a stand-in oh for like, this yeah, okay. like she's she's in additional crew as a stand-in. So I'm thinking she's one of the women in the water, maybe mm -hmm. like part of that possibly. Group. Um, that's the only thing that made sense for me. And you know what? We we talked about there's our buddy Reed Price. We didn't actually go through his credits, right? Because we're so used to them. Reed Price, Sullivan's Crossing. Sullivan's from... Crossing. He plays uh, Tom Rob no. Shandon. <laughs> well, wrong series. <laughs> No, he's he's Tom in From. He's Tom the bartender from Rob Shandon in Sullivan's Crossing. He was uh, won awards for the movie Don, Her Dad, and the Tractor, yes, which, which we, we also covered. we also covered that, and um, he's been on our channel twice. We've got two interviews with him, so go check that those out. Mm -hmm. um, we're basically like the Reed Price fan club around here. He, so. He's definitely uh, in that interview. He talked about this series, yeah, and, and specifically he talked about Zach Bay. As well, I don't know if it was in regards to this. He series talked or about Pro Zach Fay. I think we were talking mostly about from. Yeah. Um, but he worked with him also. In, they were both in Don, her dad, and the tractor. Right. Yep. And um, he told us a story about working with Bill Pullman. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, he had some great anecdotes. Yeah. So yeah, definitely check out that interview. Provide the links uh, for that so you can watch it if you're interested. Uh. Yeah. So uh, where was I'm I? Sorry. In my notes? So we're at the we're at the wake. Okay. Yeah, Harry's there, and he questions Brandon's girlfriend, and I'm sure you know who she is. This is Brandon's wife. Oh, Kat. wife, wife. Okay, <laughs> I, I demoted her. Okay, <laughs> this is Brandon's wife, Cat Kaiser. This is the only episode she appears in, but I, I thought she'd been in more episodes. But I think they just mentioned her probably like, before. She's played by Samantha Brown. Um, her credits involve several Christmas movies and then a bunch of one episode appearances. Nothing that particularly stood out to me. Okay, so. Uh, he asks about, so basically he takes her, or she walks over into the kitchen. Harry ends up following her, and then makes a very pointed, uh, like, a point of basically asking the question in front of, uh, Brandon's mother about whether he had ever been in any kind of trouble. And she's like, no, no, he's a good boy. The mother says this. Uh, no, no. Uh, he's never, he's a good man. He's never been in trouble. And meanwhile, you see, uh, Brandon's wife basically uh you know like rolling her eyes and smirking and uh, yeah we quickly get the impression that yeah. things were not all great between them mm -hmm. um so the baby's three months old she's been taking care of the baby he has not been there for her right and she basically says that he's 
sleeping around the whole island. Yep, he's um, basically a man whore. Yeah, and uh, she wants to know why Mike hasn't been arrested yet. So she's on team uh, Mike's the bad guy. Now, specifically, she mentions why hasn't the Chinese man right. been uh, been arrested? So there's some racism, obviously, there. Right, which we were told right from episode one. Yeah. Like, that that's the, the attitude of this town mm -hmm. towards the Lamb family. And uh, he ends up asking about Bowery. But uh, she doesn't know this person, but is like, yeah, that was probably someone that she was sleeping with. Meanwhile, uh, Brandon's mom is getting mad, like, that she's even bringing any of this up. She feels like she's just, uh, she is disrespecting Brandon's memory when he's basically just died. His corpse is still, well, we're at his way, right, literally. Right, yeah, like... yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe there, I understand her anger, but perhaps, you know, time and a place kind of deal. Right. I mean, don't you want to know why your son is dead? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would figure, but she doesn't seem to want to know that. that... Because maybe she knows he was up to no right. good. And Probably. And investigating this is not going to, like, put him in a good light. Meanwhile, Meg is trying her Harry impersonation, making a connection between Percy and Brandon. Uh, his mother isn't convinced, and she, you know, she gets this, like, where are you going with this look on her face? And eventually she just uh, succeeds in pissing uh, her his mother off. And that gets them thrown out. Yeah. Meg gets kicked out of the Kaiser household um, because Belle took this as an accusation against Brandon. Basically, right. the accusation is Brandon is responsible for Percy's death. Now, it's interesting. She was just body checking uh, the uh, the wife. Like, hey, don't don't say that stuff. Disrespecting your memory. She just lost a child. And then she goes and does this. Yeah. <laughs> She so, she wasn't as direct about it as Kat was though. Yeah, I she guess was so. she was trying to be a good friend while doing it. While trying you know? trying to be subtle about it, but really not succeeding yeah. at all because this is Meg we're talking about. Right, she's, she's not subtle. And uh, during this, Kat, the wife, told uh, Harry that he should go talk to Brandon's second mate. Right, who's the person that kept all of his secrets. Right, and basically, so he would know who he was sleeping with. So if anybody knows <laughs> Valerie, he'll know Valerie. Right. So meanwhile, we cut to Colin who wants to. Buy out the Kaiser's land? Uh, buy out their fishing permit, Right, actually. okay, okay. So I was wrong. Last time we talked about this, and I, I, I had assumed that the Kaisers were working under the Maldoon permit. Mm. But apparently they have their own fishing permit, their own, which means they have their own waters that they're supposed to be fishing. And uh, they are a separate company mm. from the Maldoons. So, uh, so yeah, they, they are talking about should they basically take over everything that the Kaisers were doing. Right. And Sean is against it, basically saying, hey, look, this is a dying business. There's no point in this. Yeah, he doesn't want to invest any more money into expanding their business because right. their business already isn't doing well. The waters are overfished, and he doesn't think that the uh, that the Kaiser fishing permit's actually worth anything. <laughs> Meg, meanwhile, is still on... Uh, uh, Brandon had something to do with Percy's death kick. Colin realizes that she is still talking to Ambrose. He gets angry. And after a while, basically calling him a wrong number, which is an interesting uh, little expression. And after he calms down, he casts blame uh, for Brandon's death on Mike. He's pretty convinced of that. And he's also pretty convinced that uh, Percy unalived herself and that no one else was involved. And I also think there's a hint of, uh, let's say, what's the word for it? Self-interest. Right. Because he doesn't want... He doesn't want yeah. anyone researching anything else any further. Right. Um. He said, this has gone far enough. I right. need to put an end to it. There are things that my mother doesn't know and she doesn't need to know. Right. Um. But the way he says it is, you know, we may never know why Percy did what she did. And maybe that's for the best. Maybe you don't want to know why she did this. I'm not sure I get that line of logic, but it makes sense coming from him. Coming from, Well, yeah, because he knows that she knows things that he doesn't mm -hmm. want other people to know. Right. Um, as well as the things that Meg does know. Right, exactly. Which should be pretty obvious to her what was haunting Percy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I mean, mean, you shouldn't be questioning why she was in the state of mind she was in. Right. It should it, be pretty freaking obvious to this family. It, it should be, but, you know, this, this family, as you pointed out in the past, is pretty dense. Yeah. Especially Meg. Uh, it specifically talked about the trap wars. Remember, Brand, uh, on Brandon's boat, when his body was found, were lamb traps. Mm-hmm. Um, saying that Brandon was taking the lamb traps again, and they're kind of everybody's thinking that's the motive, right? Uh, Mike killed him because of this whole trap war. Mm -hmm. And Colin tells Meg during this scene that you know they stopped. He's saying the Maldoons stopped taking the lamb traps. He told Brandon to stop, but Brandon didn't, and that's why he got killed. Right. Uh, so we have a flashback 
Percy talks about uh, in you know like they're having dinner. Yeah, Percy, it's, Percy it's a dinner. Muldoon family dinner. Right. Percy's there, and um, oh, what was her name? I have it here somewhere. Uh, Rhonda. That's Colin's girlfriend, played by Nikki Barnett. She uh, reappeared. She was also in episodes one and three. We met her before. Mm -hmm. So she ends up starting to talk about how uh, you can't really take anything from the Muldoons because they were the ones who originally stole this land in this area from the natives that were already there meg is her usual uh sympathetic self uh as uh you know sympathetic to as to anything that uh, percy ever says and basically just shuts her down yeah so this is clearly after percy started working with m she's yeah. learning this appreciation for nature mm -hmm. and she's like we're the reason that the the the, the seas are overfished like we're a problem mm -hmm. right we're not uh like, we're not honoring the land and right. nature or mm -hmm. whatever. And, of course, Meg doesn't want to hear that. All Meg wants from Percy is, yes, I want to run this business. Let's fish it until there's no fish left. Right. And she's not interested in anything that Percy has to say about anything. And I'm sure that's a pretty big contribution to her death. Had she been more... Supportive? Yes. I think maybe Percy might still be alive. Maybe. Uh, so Harry ends up meeting Rafa, which is Brandon's second mate. He's played by... Uh, the character's Rafa Dominguez. He's played by Manuel Rodriguez. And this is the only episode he appears in. Um, he was in five episodes of Black Summer, which is a really interesting zombie series. Do you see it's, it? I saw the first season, and then I was like, and I can't. I can't keep going. It was a little, it was too out there for me. Gotcha. Um, he was in one episode of The Strain and an episode of Heroes Reborn. Which is the uh, reboot. The of, reboot of, of, yeah, of Heroes, okay. yeah. Okay. That happened, oh, that was actually a long time ago now, too. Yes. Like a decade ago. Yes, <laughs> yes. Jeez. We are unfortunately very, very old. Just so you know. <laughs> so, he went out every time with Brandon, but was not out there last, last night uh, when he ended up dying, which should be an indication of something was going on. Right, which is why harry's questioning right. it uh, rapa isn't really going to cooperate but harry brings up the portland homicide and that they will look into him and question his status and Aunt rapa asks him if he's uh threatening him harry says no but he totally is yeah he's pretty much saying like well you'd rather talk to me than right. go yeah, talk yeah, yeah. to portland guys mm -hmm. because i don't i'm not here to hurt you i just want to know what is going on with brandon mm -hmm. they're gonna you know they're gonna look at you a little deeper right so if you could help me solve this before they get to you maybe you'll be in a better place right which i mean it's true yeah but also yeah he's being very threatening and and uh in, in his own little hairy way yeah but uh and never does he be like oh by the way i'm not officially investigating this i'm just some dude who's like visiting my island <laughs> right yeah yeah uh, so he eventually relates a story about Brandon, who took a girl to him who didn't speak English, uh, that Rafa was uh, able asked to treat because in when he was living in Honduras, I think it was. Yep, he was a paramedic in yes. Honduras. Um, so yeah, a couple weeks ago, Brandon called him, and the the girl had a uh, injury on her foot, mm -hmm. and this is we get to see it in a flashback, and. Uh, Brandon's story was that, that they were up at Dublin Point and she fell and hurt her foot and she doesn't want to go to the hospital. Uh, probably trying to say to uh, to Rafa, like, oh, she's undocumented. Right. Right. But yeah. that's not the real reason. Mm. We'll find out uh, next episode, I think, what the real reason is going yes. on here. Yeah, we're going to get the full but, scoop there. Um, so Rafa's treating her foot because she can't go to the hospital, but he doesn't believe that her injuries came from falling on rocks because he pulled a some kind of nail, some specific kind of nail out of her foot that's used in boats. Like, you'd only find this type of nail on a boat. Mm -hmm. So that was weird to him, right? And he doesn't believe any of this. Um, he thinks there's more going on than this is just some girl that Brandon's sleeping with. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he, he knows, like, there's something else going on here. And this character, by the way, we don't get her name here, but I think we get her name next episode because she is credited uh, as Celia. Celia Gomes is her name. The actress who plays her is Luciana Sylvester Fernandez. She's, this is the only episode she's in, but I'm pretty sure we talk about her next episode is, is where her name comes okay. in. Or they just dropped her name from the story. I don't right. know. But that's what she's credited as. She only has four acting credits altogether, um, including this and one episode of Sugar Highs, which I think we mentioned Last week, somebody else was in that series. Probably. Okay. Or one of the times we talked. When somebody was in it at some point, we mentioned yes, it. I yes. don't know. I'm sure it's come up We before. mentioned so many shows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, he, he, he's not convinced and he wants to get her alone to kind of ask her like, what's really going on, right? Because I think there's something bigger here than, than what he's saying and what he's suggesting. But he was interrupted. Right. Uh, yeah, so uh, he's interrupted by Percy, who is basically rushing to talk to Brandon. I, I'm not really sure where Percy is in her story, why she's so urgent to talk to Brandon. But he quickly drives off before they can talk. And this is where he spots this girl for the first time and gets wind that something is not kosher. And specifically that Percy witnessed this yes. girl. Yeah. And so she knows, like, mm. this is where Percy in, starts investigating what the heck is Brandon up right. to yeah. in, in her past storyline. Uh, we, we see Mike Lamb in jail. He's visited by his wife. He says to her he doesn't think he needs a lawyer and that this will all blow over. She suggests that he tell him tell them everything we don't know what she's referring to at this point in the story but we will but we will and uh by the way i should say that i this is a really great scene uh not a word of english is spoken and the acting in this scene is beautiful this wasn't in english no oh yeah it was spoken in their native language oh i didn't i didn't pick up on that well it was it was like we read the subtitles i mean i read subtitles for every scene so gotcha <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah. no they were not speaking i English. watch everything with subtitles i mean i have the volume on too right but i'm just so engrossed in taking the notes that and, and i i read the subtitles for every everything i watch <laughs> that i i didn't even pick up on the fact that we weren't in english nope they were not speaking english they were speaking their native and that language. makes sense because yeah. they don't want the cops to right. overhear what they're talking yes, about exactly. since they're talking about what should we tell the cops so mike says he won't do that because he doesn't want it to basically fall on his family yeah he and... thinks it's a bad idea what do you think without spoiling what they're talking about we know what they're talking about do you I'm... think they should tell i'm not sure that it helps them i don't think it helps anybody and one i think you know like is that gonna is that gonna get him is that gonna make them stop suspecting that he killed brandon i don't think so i think if anything it makes it them gives look him motive. more motive right, right. more guilty looking to... and not only that but cj doesn't know this yet right so you're basically going to reveal that information and seriously hurt cj right so no i don't think this is a good i don't idea. i don't see how that helps him it doesn't it's just his wife being sort of irrational and emotional he's, she's not thinking logically yeah I, I think she's tired of holding this secret yeah I, I think she's just using the situation as an excuse as well like you were just saying she, she wants to say what this is all about, what's what really happened. But, uh, yeah, I don't think it's wise to do so in this Yeah, I, I don't think it would be any help to uh, his case here. Mm -hmm. uh, so Meg ends up speaking to Raskin about reopening the Percy case. He doesn't see a reason to do that. He doesn't even know how to do that. She insists there's a connection to what happened to Brandon and Percy. He's not convinced. He says if there's a connection, Portland will find it, and so will he. Do you get the sense that... Does Raskin know how useless he is? I think at some level he does, which yeah. is why he's like a little embarrassed. Right. But also, I think he's so incompetent that he can't comprehend how incompetent <laughs> he is. Gotcha. Um, I, you, you don't want to have a crime in this town. No, no. This isn't a good place for that. <laughs> you know, he should go to Sullivan's Crossing, where, you know, where it's bad to get, have any kind of emergency ever yeah, because <laughs> there's only one ambulance. But yeah, he would fit right into that town. Uh, yeah, basically, and uh, that would be another job for uh, Maggie, basically. Uh, so Meg thinks that he's not going to find it because he's not looking for it, and that's true. And also, he's not going to she's he's not going to find it because he's bad, really bad at his job. Right. Uh, CGA wants to talk to the detective, uh, but Josh is past blocking. This is the second, again. Yes. He's basically, you know what? I remember this episode happening like episodes or this moment happening like episodes later. But well, apparently, we're getting we're getting yeah, to yeah. the end. Yeah, there's only two episodes left. Right, yeah, and we know episode eight is really all about the other thing. Mm -hmm. So this story involving Josh, really, it's this episode and the next one is, right. is all we got for it. Uh, so he says he has info about Brandon, uh, and he won't talk to Josh about it. That's a good call, right? <laughs> uh, I don't think he knows how good of a call that is, but he's very much right. Josh ends up shutting him down, saying it's not going to make any difference, and this pisses off CJ, and CJ goes away. But, crucially, Meg is overhearing this conversation. She finds CJ sitting out by the docks and gently tries to get info out of him. CJ says he didn't kill Percy, he loved her. Meg looks a little taken aback by this, like, basically, that's a piece of information that's totally news to her. And but she believes she never... it, yep, she... which, you know, yeah. I, I get it. Yep. She, I think she's like, how could you? Mm. Does she know? Does she... Let me say how to ask this without sounding spoilery. 
Does she know that he doesn't know the thing he doesn't know? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't think that she necessarily knows because i know. feel like she'd be surprised that he loves percy given right the truth mm -hmm. but he doesn't know that right so he doesn't have a reason not to love percy right yeah i yeah i'm not sure if she she knows that he knows that he doesn't know <laughs> <laughs> all right so and if you don't know what we're talking about come right. back and re-listen to this conversation after you finish the series <laughs> all right um, so uh he ends up asking her who was Brandon meeting in the early mornings? Uh, you know, a boat from off island. And he says her sons are involved in everything Brandon does, so she must know, uh, know too, what they were up to. But Meg doesn't believe her sons were involved in anything illegal. And CJ says he was following Brandon around to find some dirt. And he says that uh, he saw him meet up with two guys who end up beating the crap out of him. Yeah, and we see this in a flashback. Yes. Okay, do. so we get a flashback. Uh, we follow, he followed Brandon to the boat disposal yard, where we're <laughs> going to spend a lot of time throughout the next couple of scenes. Um, and we see the two guys. So the two guys are Scott McCord. See, I didn't even see who they were. Yeah, we really... get the first shot of them here and we gotcha. will play this scene out in full a little bit later. But in this flashback, we see this start, we see it happening. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the actual, like, uh, when they were beating up Brandon. And then we'll meet these two characters again in present time. And gotcha. A little bit later. So it's, I, I, in my notes, I wrote his name is Victor. <laughs> um, what is his name? Um, Vern. Vern, yeah. So Vern Novak, played by Scott McCord, whose name we don't know in this episode. Right. But we meet him for the first time in this episode. Um, we'll get to see a lot more of him in episode seven. Again, uh, he plays Victor in From. He's in tons and tons of like cartoon voice work he does. I oh, hadn't really? realized that. I, huh. I saw that when taking these notes. Like he has 128 total acting credits, and I think more than half of them is voice work. Oh, okay. Um, which is really interesting because he does have a, a fun voice, right? He does. Yeah. I feel like he he's must be really good at like doing different voices. I'm sure he is. I'm, I'm interested in, in in hearing some clips of some of that. Um, so, yeah, we see him, and he is notably wearing a red rain jacket. Ooh. We remember where that came up before. Yes. Yes, we, yep, we definitely remember that. And then the other dude is credited in this episode as Black Jacket. He does, this character doesn't have a name. This is the only episode he's in. He's just Vern's kind of partner dude. Right? Well, I'm going to guarantee that this is the role that he is the most proud of. <laughs> Black Jacket Man. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, his uh, his character's name is Black Jacket. And it's funny because I'm staring at this and I'm like, that has that is who this is, and I confirm that. But his jacket don't look black to me. It looks like a light gray. So I'm a little confused why his character's name. So you think his on credit... IMDb is Black Jacket? So you think his credit should be changed, basically? Gray Jacket. Okay. Yeah. All right. Gray Jacket. Or man. or how I refer to him in my notes throughout the rest of this episode is Bald Dude. <laughs> bald Dude. Bald Dude. So we've got Red Jacket and Bald Dude. Okay, those, um, are, those are some good names. So Black Jacket, a.k.a. Bald Dude, is played by Dylan Brentwood. And this is, again, the only episode he's in of this series. He's in an episode of 12 Monkeys. That's interesting. Um, I love that show. Yep. He's in two episodes of The Expanse, an episode of Moonshine, which comes up so in, many of our Nova yes. Scotian actors are. I actually um, looked up this actor a little further. He's uh, He owns some kind of, like, whiskey business. Okay. Like, he, he's, uh, he makes... I think it was whiskey. Something the like actor that. himself? Yeah. And he's appearing in an episode called Moonshine? Right? <laughs> yeah, that's ironic. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, he looked like an interesting person. Yeah, okay. Um, So, you know, we, we see the two of them. You know who else is in Moonshine? Who? The guy that we're later talking today, Jamie McGuire. Is he? Yes. Is he in Moonshine? He is. I, was, I think everybody's in Moonshine. That, that's, that's another show I'm going to add to my I want to watch it sometime list. That, that because... was one of his work that he's actually credited in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Reed Price is in an episode or two of Moonshine. Yes. Yep, yep. And uh, I think everybody else that comes up in our Nova Scotian discussion. <laughs> Basically, that series more than any other is really incestuous. It, it seems to have all of the Nova Scotian talent Well, in it. I haven't watched it, but from what I understand... Uh, it's got a guest cast, a new guest cast every week, right? Oh, okay. Because it's about like this, uh, I think it's a ski resort, some kind of vacation place. Mm -hmm. And so we've got the like the main cast that like works there. And then every week there's new guests gotcha. that, are, that are in the episode. Like guests at that resort, I mean, as well as, you know, their guest actors. Huh, so cool. it's one of those ones where, yeah, they've got a ton of people in it because they need new people every single right. week. Yeah. A little bit like, you know, uh, what we have here in the U.S. is what we'll call it like the SVU syndrome, <laughs> right? Everybody's been in an episode of SVU. Yep. 
Pretty much. Because they need a new guest cast every single week. And I think it's kind of like that, where okay. they're constantly bringing in new people. Anyways, uh, we see these two people beat up Brandon. That's what we see of them so far. All right, so uh, Meg ends up relaying this information to Harry. Uh, Meg notices the state of his grill, which I'm assuming is going to come up again. Uh, because this character, this is a you know a character in throughout this entire uh, season thus far is this grill the grill and he's talking about how the reason he's he's wanting so hard to fix it is because he he kind of promised um, Sonia Sonia thank you I was like I don't <laughs> have her name here she's right. not in this episode um and you know what I I saw recently I it might have even been when I was taking these notes when I opened Netflix. Um, usually when I like scroll over the center, it shows me a scene from this season. Like usually I, it shows me, you know, like when it does the little preview. Yeah. I, it often shows the, uh, the mall scene. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the case for you? Yeah. Um, but just recently within the last couple of days, it showed me a scene from season three, huh. uh, with Jamie. Okay. And I was really like confused. Like, why is it showing me that scene all of a sudden? All right. right whatever. But it was a scene where Jamie was grilling. Oh. And I'm trying to remember, like, was there something about grilling? Like, is there some metaphor here that's carrying over? I wish I could answer that question. And I don't remember. But unfortunately, I don't remember season three at but all. But it was Jamie, and he was grilling, and then he, like, put his hand really close to the thing to feel the pain from it. Oh, uh -huh, okay. Is that also something that's carrying over from season three that I forget? Is that the reason that Harry's... um. So obsessed with this grill. So obsessed with pain. Oh, uh, well, yeah, okay. Like, did that come from Jamie? I'm not sure. I, I don't remember season three. <laughs> I, I kind of just took that obsession with pain thing as a means to punish himself for his crime. Yeah, but I feel, like there's, as, I feel like crime. there's more carryover that I forgot about. Yeah. Uh, relating to the Jamie character. So Harry wants to go visit the dock owned by Don Lanier, who uh, is in your credits. Uh, he's not in the scene, but yeah, we can talk about him later. Or, or uh, well, I mean, we've talked about him previously. That's Monty Murray. Yes. Um, who is in an episode of Sullivan's Crossing, right. and he was in Don, her dad, and the tractor. The tractor yep. And he's in Bone Cage. Right. Um, again, all these things that we talk about. Yes. Yes. So often. Um. Uh, this is the the boatyard. Not, right. This isn't the dock. This is where okay. ships go to die. It's basically a boat graveyard. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kind of like the car graveyard in, that, uh, in that Victor loves and from. Right. So he's always hanging out with like these uh, dilapidated vehicles. Oh, yes, yes. I guess so. That, that must be Vic, uh, Scott McCord's thing is just hanging out with dead vehicles. <laughs> so he also relates a story of what Rafa told him. Uh, Meg offers to go talk to, uh, to Don Lanier. And Harry goes to the boatyard. He discovers a boat named Valerie. So that ex uh, explains That's that That's where the name Valerie came from. Now the question is, what about it? Yes, What what is the significance of this boat? Right. So Meg goes to talk to Don, who's listening to his granddaughter sing. And yes, she... and the granddaughter, um, her name is Ashley, or she's credited as Ash Lanier, although he does call her Ashley in the episode. Mm -hmm. She's played by a young actress named Emerson McNeil. This is the only episode of this series she's in. Um, she only has three total acting credits, including an episode of Moonshine. <laughs> and, you know, I was questioning if Emerson McNeil is any relation to uh, John McNeil, mm -hmm. who is one of the background actors in From. He plays the mechanic oh, creature. That would make sense. Um, I didn't find evidence of that, though. Don't you have, like, him on Facebook or yeah, something? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm friends with him on Facebook. But so I, you could always ask I, him I could have messaged him and asked him, like, hey, do you... Is this, like, little girl, like, some relation to yours? But I don't know. That felt creepy to do. <laughs> um, so I didn't do that. Gotcha. Um, well, it would have been even worse if I did it, I think. But, but um, yeah, so, like, it felt a little stalkery, right? That yeah, I'm looking yeah. at this actor's, like, personal stuff. I mean, I am friends with him, but I'm like, this feels a little wrong. Um, but <laughs> right. I didn't see a mention of that girl's name on his stuff anywhere. So gotcha. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but it feels, like, too coincidental for there not to be some link there. Yeah, it makes sense. So... Uh, he, she's once again trying to play Harry, and she's not very artful at it. She just straight up asks, uh, w what Brandon has been up to. And, uh, Her meanwhile, Harry is investigating the boat. There's a bad smell and some flies. It looks like, uh, There's, some there's are... a poop bucket. Yes. He finds a poop bucket. I'll just say which, what it is. Which is very pleasant. Uh, but I don't feel like that's an odd thing to find on a boat. No, I guess not. But we... I mean, maybe the fact that they didn't clean it is right, odd. Yeah, yeah. But the boat's also, like left here to die so right. i don't know would you clean the boat the last time it was used probably not 
So uh, Meg... she also finds discarded kids' shoes, right? Which I think that was a little more concerning. Yes, like so there's just this pair of shoes like discarded over on the edge there. So uh, we cut back to Meg, who's really pushing Don, and uh, Don thinks that Brandon was sleeping with someone, which is why he was at the the boatyard. Yeah, that's his was... explanation yeah. for why Brandon was at the boatyard. Is like, oh, that's where he had his affairs. Obviously, right. it's the you know most private place you can go to on the island. So Meg keeps pushing and saying, hey, look, we were family. I spoon fed your wife when she was dying. At least that was the impression I was getting. Yeah, that, that that's statement. what I got from that as well. Uh, but John eventually just shuts her down and goes back to the party. Yeah, she she tells him like about the two men attacking Brandon. She's like, mm. I know what happened there. I just need to know why. Right. Who are they? What was Brandon involved in? Mm. And I think he he's following the you don't want to know attitude yeah. mm -hmm. by not telling her. Right. Um, because obviously he knows what's going on, mm -hmm. but he doesn't want her to know. And I really think he's, I don't think he's trying to keep it a secret as much as he is trying to protect her. He is trying to be family. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, as family, I'm telling you, forget about this. Yeah, you leave, don't, leave this you don't want to know mm -hmm. because guess what? This is bad news for you too. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, Harry discovers a room on the boat, which includes a camera and a screen it's the kind of thing you would do to, like, maybe print in a fake ID or something along those lines. See, now what I got watching this scene, yeah, both the first time watching it and this time, knowing what's really happening, right, which is what you're saying, yes, um, knowing that, I still get the impression watching this, it looks like something worse is happening here. So more like porn. Yeah, there's okay. there's a dirty mattress. Right. There's disclo oh. discarded clothes on the mattress. Right. There's a ring light. Mm hmm. Um, there's a makeup bag. It looks like, yeah, bad stuff's happening here. Gotcha. What's with the screen? Like, are they doing different backgrounds or something? Well, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, we're never going to find that out. But it yeah. looks like, I mean, obviously it is. It's a, they're taking pictures, right? right? Like it's some kind of a studio, but it looked like they were doing something else. Gotcha. Gotcha. Like, why are we doing this on a dirty mattress? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he calls Meg, but they have a bad connection and he ends up getting shot at. Chased by the two men that we saw earlier, one of them played by Scott McCord, and the other dude that was credited as Black, Black Jacket. Black Jacket, Man. yeah. He's, Dylan Brentwood is the actor. He's chased through the woods and eventually manages to lose them temporarily under some brush. He talks to hallucination Percy, and she tells him that he never stops and says it's almost like he wants to die, which is something that we already know, basically. Right. Well, I think in this moment, he's kind of debating with himself, like, okay, is this where it ends? Right. Do I just let them kill me? Right. Like, do I give up right now, or do I keep fighting for my life? And she says to him that none of this will make up for what he did to Brandon. To what he did to Jamie. Jamie. That's what I... I have in my notes, Jamie. Why did I say Brandon? I don't know. <laughs> okay, anyway. I don't know. Jamie being the character from season three. Right, yeah. Who's... He's carrying... Uh, Harry's carrying the, the guilt for Jamie's death. Right. So he fight. He ends up getting into a fight uh, with the thug and ends up stab, stabbing him and then takes off into the woods again. And he only escapes when Meg finds it. Yeah, so Meg pulls up, comes to Harry's rescue. The guys are still pursuing him. And it looks like they've been at this for hours. Like, we went from <laughs> light to middle of the night dark. Right, yep. And uh, he managed, you know, to, to stay away from them that long. And then Meg comes and they... She's like, he's like, we got to go to the hospital, right? Right. And I thought it was really funny because she doesn't take him to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Is the hospital just as bad as the police? Do we avoid the hospital on purpose? It feels like we're avoiding the hospital at all costs in this series. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, so we have a brief scene with CJ and his mother. She makes a reference to uh, he should be home when he gets out. I don't know. Okay, so remember Mike oh. was sleeping in oh, the yeah, restaurant. Yeah. Yes. He hasn't been sleeping at home with Stephanie. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if at home is upstairs. We know CJ lives upstairs. Right. Do the lambs live upstairs too? I, I guess. I thought they did, but yeah. maybe they don't. But either way, he's been sleeping literally like in the back room of the mm -hmm. restaurant itself. And she, what she's doing is she's stripping that bed. And she's like, I don't want him to sleep here. He's going to come home. So they've been kind of fighting. And she's like, no, he, we're, we're fixing this now. That's okay. what that scene's about. Okay. We also get a little clip um, of Colin leaving his apartment to answer a ringing payphone across the street. Yes. So that's a thing where he's monitoring this payphone. Mm-hmm. Uh, do payphones still exist? 
Uh, you know, I think I've seen one or two out there. They're very rare, but... Maybe they're still more prevalent in Nova Scotia than they are here. Yeah, maybe. I feel like it's been a decade since I've seen a payphone anywhere. I, I, I've seen a payphone uh, within the last five years. I know that much. Okay. Do, do, are they still in New York? Do they still have payphones in New York? I don't think so. Like, but, again, I don't remember seeing one in so long. Uh, the Duncan that I used to work at, Duncan Owens, a long, uh, while ago, before they moved to another place, actually had a payphone in it. It didn't work because they disconnected it. Because <laughs> pe kids constantly used it to call the police. Oh, my goodness. Yes, they were constantly calling 911, so they disconnected the phone. But, um, yeah, so I'm not, I think they're still around. They're just very, very rare. Um and we, we see a shot of Raskin who's looking at Percy's file and then puts it down. I'm guessing that kind of means that Raskin is having some doubts here. Yeah, so he's he's like, oh, maybe I should keep looking. Mm. You know, Meg got to him a little bit. Right, Even if yeah. he's not doing so officially, he's starting to think about all of this now. That like, mm. oh, maybe Meg and Harry are both on to something. Right. So Meg brings Harry home to clean to up. To her house, right. right. Uh, again, didn't go to the hospital. He, right. She's like... I'm just going to bring you to my house. That's right. the best place for you, right? I, I was kind of wondering about her intentions uh, when she was doing this. Was this an attempt to seduce him? Well, yeah, because in the last scene, he's like, we need to go to the hospital. Right. And then she's like, I'm going to take you home. Like, this feels like like a horror movie setup or right, something. Right, yeah, yeah. I thought she might, like, just straight up shoot him. But then again, why rescue him if you're just going to kill him? Yeah, it's it's all <laughs> a little strange. But for the purpose of this, for the, the, you know, the sake of the story is Sean is seeing all this. Mm -hmm. He calls his brother Colin. Yep. And he says that Meg brought Harry to her house and asks, what should we do? Right. And in the final scene, we see this, the thugs set fire to the Valerie boat. And that is where the Valerie is torched. Now, was that call? I was a little confused by this. Was that the call that was ringing in the payphone? Like, did Sean call Colin via the payphone to say, I'm what do we do? I'm wondering if the call to the payphone was the thugs asking what they should do and that that the burning the bowery boat was probably his suggestion because in story in like how television works or movies you don't see a phone call before the phone call is made usually well right but we were kind of seeing yeah. all of these different characters like right. like really quick scenes jumping between them but, so it doesn't necessarily you know show passage of time right but usually things happen i mean unless you're doing non-linear storytelling you usually don't see the thing happening before the person does it i was just confused like okay yeah. we're seeing him answer the, go to the payphone yeah and then the next thing that we hear involving him is his brother calling him right and my question was, why wouldn't he just call him on his cell phone? Right. Because, like, that's not going to look suspicious, you calling your brother. Right. So, uh, I'm thinking that the phone call to the payphone was something else. And probably something connected to, to the shenanigans that Harry was up to. With, okay. the, with the thugs. That's, either that's way, guess, yes. either way, all of these people are now in touch with each other and on the what do we need to do right. bandwagon. Mm -hmm. And what they did was the boat and it's not entirely clear like right. who gave that order mm -hmm. like where what's the dynamic between all these people and i don't think the uh we the, don't know for positive yeah. at this point who's involved in what right and i don't think the final two episodes fully reveals all those questions no but it makes it very clear that all these people who want to keep secrets are connected having the same secrets to keep <laughs> right yeah yeah that makes sense all right, so that was the episode. Do we have anything else to say? I want to make sure we hit all of the actors, uh, and we did. Yeah, that was everybody who was new to this episode. Of course, we also had our returning cast. Um, Harry Ambrose played by Bill Pullman. Chief Lou Raskin is Joe Cobden. Uh, we have Meg Maldoon played by Francis Fisher. Percy Maldoon played by Alice Krummelberg. Sean is Neil Huff. Colin is Michael Mosley. Stephanie Lamb played by Cindy Chung. Mike Lamb, played by Ronan Wong. CJ Lamb, played by David... Ooh. <laughs> David Hine. See, I didn't even... I don't even think I... When I saw the actor that I even tried. Though I, I might have. I, I mean, we've did. talked about all of these actors yeah, yeah, before. Yeah. We haven't mentioned their names in a while, so I thought yeah. I'd, I'd throw them out there. Brandon Kaiser was Garrett Patrick Payone. Does he appear in the rest of the season? I'm not sure. Mm. I, I don't have episode count for him in my notes. I think, gotcha. I, I would assume the next episode he does. Right. Because we're we still dealing that. with that story. Yeah. I, maybe not episode eight, because by then we've moved on to the other secret. Right. Gotcha. 
All right. So, yeah, I'm finally at a point where I know where we are with the story. <laughs> yes, yes. We finally caught up as we're getting to the last couple of episodes. Yeah, now i like, okay, I know where we are. I know this happens in this episode and that happens in that episode. Right. Um, Now that we only have two left. <laughs> right, yeah. Because the last few, I was like, wait, how is this story broken up? I was really confused. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, in a rewatch. It's been three years since I watched it the first time, so. And, you know, we are getting older. And, and we're in a really different place watching it this time because we're really focused on these actors. Because right. Because we know some of them now. Right, right. We've and and by no, we, like, see them in things, but also, like, we're friends with some of these people now. Yes, yes. Like, we talk to these people. Mm-hmm. Which is so cool. It is very, so very cool. cool. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're kind of watching it from a very different perspective than mm -hmm. the first time I watched this, where we were just, you know, watching it for the story like most viewers do <laughs> right yeah yeah we're picking it apart which is kind of what we do it's here. what we do it's, it's yeah. called the deep dive for, yeah. for a reason yes all right so we would like to hear from you what you think of this podcast what do you think of this episode stacy we reached at i reached on twitter x instagram and threads at tvn coupon talk if you like this video and want to support the channel there's a number of ways to do so you can join one of my corn productions facebook pages you can follow me on twitter at core productions you can buy something from the corn production store on zazzle you can buy me a coffee you can join the Corman Production Store on what? No. You can join the Corman Productions membership for 99 cents a month. And, of course, you can like, share, and comment on this video, hitting the bell so you get notified. And, yeah, of course, subscribing to my channel. This is Dave and Stacey from Corman Productions signing off.